everyone welcome to <laughs> a fern between us uh that was really a weird introduction hi everyone what? welcome to a fern between us <laughs> uh, i i thought that was a go and it was actually just an enthusiastic countdown um three two one and no yeah. <laughs> We are on episode 90 of A Fern Between Us. And we are two of the four owners of Evoc Winery. I'm Jesse. And I'm Michelle. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. And uh, tonight we are going to discuss how to plan for wine at your holiday party. So a lot of people, you know, really get tied up in the details of, mm -hmm. I want to have a really great party. I want to have plenty of wine. How do I do this? I'm still on a budget, right? You can't just buy... Well, this time, we, I mean, you're, everyone's spending way more than we should, right? Mm -hmm. Already. And it's like, oh, I don't want another thing or whatever to cost that much more money. You know? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It's really tricky. So <laughs> Everything costs so much money right now. It, it really does. So we're going to do a very quick check-in and then we're going to jump into questions that are around that and a full tasting um, and explain some of the wines that are out there and, of course, ours too. <laughs> uh, so as we do a quick check-in, uh, you and Chris have been super busy bottling and uh, doing blends, getting the next vintages out. Including this one right here. The yes. Rosé of San Giovese is finally back on our list, which we're super stoked about. Yes. Happened, I guess, last week maybe was our first. Uh... So yeah, we're so so excited. That's been like months and months uh uh, since we've been out of it and it's yes. one of our most popular wines uh, and you know uh, it, that's always good for Christmas and New Year's it's a great wine oh to have gosh. around any time of year so we're stuck to have that back on but Absolutely. yeah we've been doing that Chris Chris and Lily are leaving this weekend for yes. um, going back uh, to Mexico yeah a few weeks just over the break basically um, see her family yeah exactly so just tying up some loose ends you know and uh end of the year yeah <laughs> right and uh and so we did mention the uh rosé was released last week we had mentioned that it was available again yeah. but uh this gives us a chance to actually taste it yeah. uh on air and um i'm just so excited about it and one of the things that's so cool is how food friendly it is and it's yeah. one of the best vintages to date, I think. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm digging it. So far, this is, uh, uh, it, it's one of the top two. Mm -hmm. There was one a couple years ago that was just yeah. <laughs> really, really good too. And, and I think this is a lot like that, maybe better. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. As it ages, you know, you gotta, it's, it's, it's gonna come into itself uh, over the next few months and then then mm -hmm. we'll really, really know. But it's it's good. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good I'm one. I'm super excited about it. And, um, uh, a couple other things. We have the staff party coming up tomorrow where yep. we try to say how much we love our staff uh, <laughs> a little bit more than usual. We really try to, you know, supply a nice dinner and... We hope it lands and we don't get too drunk and <laughs> mess it all up. <laughs> hey guys, what's happening? You guys are the best. They're like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> Some years are better than others. Um, our white elephant has gotten more and more interesting over the years. It depends on the group, but those can get pretty, pretty fun. Decently raucous. Yeah. So that'll be a lot of fun. And then the Dixon uh, Light Parade. Parade is tomorrow oh. or uh, Saturday night. Saturday night, cool. Yeah, yeah that's gonna be fun. So um, people have bonfires out on the main street. So we're gonna go over to some friend's house and you know be able to watch it from a bonfire because it's gonna be cold. It is cold Ooh. here. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, I don't know what's happening in your neck of the woods, but it is so cold. It's supposed to get down to seven, which um, you know is gonna be cold standing out there in seven. Yeah, it won't be seven while we're standing there. It'll be like 15, but that's cold enough. Mm -hmm. Or 20. Maybe it'll be 20. Mm -hmm. It's cold enough. We'll have to make sure to have a water bottle of something to keep us warm. Some hot toddy or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then uh, Sunday Hanukkah starts, and then we've got the the last week before Christmas. So, yeah. woof, man, it's gone fast. And the World Cup is on Sunday. Oh my gosh, yes, that's right. The <laughs> final. 
The, so yeah, that'll be really exciting. Yeah. That's gonna be fun. Yeah, so much to celebrate. <laughs> it's France and Argentina, Argentina, right? Argentina. Hopefully, you know, we like to keep it homebound. You know, one of the Americas. That's always good when you know we kick the crap out of the Europeans. But <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> I, I guess you're making a home over there now. So. Yeah, I, I'm like, well, I keep going over there and spending so much time, and I love it more and more. And and all of my French friends, I'm sorry, I I don't know, I can't take him anyway. Um, <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. So um, we have a lot to talk about as far as tasting all of these. Uh, we're not going to taste all of them, but we are going to show you some options. Uh, so let's get into the first question. Cool. And that is, how do I pair with the meal, but also pick a wine everyone will like? So that's tricky. And I totally mm -hmm. understand the pressure yeah. of that. And I would say a white and a red or a rosé. And that's part of why yeah. I have white a bunch and a red of rosés. or a rosé and a red, she means to say. Because yeah, yeah. Everyone, a lot of people like reds, but a lot of people won't do reds. So you have to have a white or a rosé. Mm -hmm. Those are interchangeable. So yes. what pick your pick your favorite between the two we like we say rosé of course rosé is awesome and maybe a better food pairer than most whites even but well especially if you're only going to have one white and one yeah. red the rosé offers the ability to be paired with some of the bolder dishes and yeah. carry that so that somebody yeah. can stay with white uh, or rosé throughout the entire evening and yeah. have a really nice pairing still and I think it's important that we look at, uh, you know, colors of rosé. So we have a second rosé. Yeah, look at that. Ours is, ours is darker. Ours is a pretty decently light rosé, but this is definitely way lighter. This is even. like really, really petal pink. I love it. It's kind so of color. Cool. That and comes out of this box, by the way. Yes. If you see a box, a box. you probably know it's going to be a little less expensive. So then hugely, you so know, then your uh, bubblies or your uh, bottles. Uh, bottled wines. <laughs> and so um, this is our first time trying this rosé. Uh, yeah. This is straight out of the box. And uh, the reason why we are tasting a box wine is because of that incredible element of you can get a lot of wine in this box. This is four bottles worth four bottles and it was on sale for 17.99 so you know it's like 450 <laughs> it's a quarter of the cost and, I mean, and that's the, amazing and this i mean to taste it like right now i'm already i already love it this is a this is at least a 17 dollar bottle of wine basically but you're getting four times that that is it's it's good that is actually um sometimes so, they can be a little too fruity yeah no this is great um and this is Provisions, Everyday Fine Wines. Um, their description... In case you couldn't quite see it, but... Yeah. And their description of the wine on the tab is nice as well. And it talks about, you know, the strawberry notes, but also the citrus and uh, having a fresh finish. Mm -hmm. That always is indicative of a drier kind of style. And so I think that's really important. And this is great, right? It's, it's fabulous. A really good buy. And you know, one of the things that you can do is you can start with a more expensive wine. Um, you know, our rose is 19, and mm -hmm. um, which is a really good buy for a you know, handcrafted, really specialized <laughs> uh, rose. That's a phenomenal deal. And so, you can start with that and have a couple mm -hmm. of bottles you know, pour some for everybody and then you move on to the less expensive wines. Yeah. You always, also always start with your more expensive wines. Always start with your older wines, mm -hmm. uh, your more special wines. As soon as you've had a few, a couple drinks, you start losing your palate. You're deep into conversation. You're not paying attention to the wine. Lesser quality wines can substitute. You just don't want, um, you just don't want like that, you know, the, the, uh, the fake wines, mm. you know, the fake tasting wines. I don't know. If, I don't even know how the to super, describe super that. Super, super cheap but... bottles that yeah. are, you know, you, on the very bottom. <laughs> you still want the supermarket. So, you still want something nice. Yeah. I mean, even the ones that are here, that, like some of the biggest sellers are are not not high quality, and I don't, you know, I I would well, I would vote this over probably eighty percent of the wines in the grocery store. Well, a lot of times it's like really crazy. big bulk 
Um, and so yeah. they're trying to keep it consistent year to year in these huge bats. And so they manipulate it a little so that they can keep that continuity. And yeah. it's not it's not always it's pleasant. Too much. Um, <laughs> it doesn't so, taste like wine to me. <laughs> you know, that's the thing is that there's so many wines being put in boxes now. And don't be shy about trying them out. Not yeah. only are they phenomenal buys, but they are also, yeah. uh, you know, more really good, decent wines are actually in a yeah. box so we're all getting used to cans and boxes and stuff and i think that's an important thing um in europe they look at you like ugh. that will never ever happen yeah they're <laughs> but they will repulsed. do a keg they'll, they'll keg their wines uh so or for yeah oh, that was weird <laughs> um yeah Our house is adjusting uh, yeah <laughs> earthquake no i don't know what happened <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, the big thing in Europe is uh, wine in a carafe. And yeah. that is a great way to serve a box wine. You put yeah. it on the table and you can either choose to make a cute little card, title card for it on the table or not. Just tell but everyone, yeah. Yeah, it's, <laughs> um, you know, I know some amount of this is a lot of uh, people were writing in about how to you know, decorate and put those things. I did not get into decorations, but I can write to you guys and tell you about how to put like a wine table together. Maybe you could even like put in it a decanter. I mean, oh, you for sure. You don't need to. It's no, decanters but it's not gonna, are awfully wieldy. Yeah. yeah. And and usually people save wieldy, it for their unwieldy. Unwieldy. Um, <laughs> But we don't know what wieldy actually means. Mm. So. <laughs> I don't know if there is a word wieldy, but then there there would have to be if there's if an it's unwieldy. unwieldy yeah. <laughs> I've always wondered. Anyway, um, uh, <clears throat> usually you decant something that's like nicer mm. or something like mm -hmm. that. So it'd be weird, maybe in some ways. But that's all a carafe is too. Is it's basically right? decanted. But you're also, you know, like with a decanter, <coughs> it's very important that you pour the opposite side of it and it funnels out and you're yeah. doing a whole thing. Yeah. And then, you know, you're trying to pour and it's awkward and you spill it all <laughs> over and then you have to, you know, sip off the table because nobody's going to waste that good wine. But with a carafe, you know, that's um, the very uh, town yeah wine um a craft um, could even be just your 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 wine your um you know a uh, temporary wine bottle you know or whatever you know like uh, oh yeah 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 the, uh, yeah you, you could just pull you know like pull the label off of another bottle and yeah. uh pour yeah. the box into it so it's not labeled as something different because you know let's not get into that <laughs> and but then yeah you could absolutely yeah. have that and you know use a stopper yeah. That's a good idea. I like that. Um, <laughs> so uh, we're doing a comparison of rosés because, again, I really think that that is one of the strongest choices for working with so many different foods and not screwing up yeah. the, the pairing. Yeah. Um, and again, we are offering that anybody that has a menu or a party and you know what you're going to be serving and you want some advice, for free, you can send me your menu and I will pair it. That's just one of the services that we're offering for this <laughs> holiday season, which is really fun. Um, so I'm trying to get through this because then we are going to attack. One of these cans? Yes. Okay, which one do you want first? Wines. Um, I'm not 100% sure this which one's bubbly. one. They're both. They're both bubbly. Okay. Yeah. Um, they should both be rosé bubbly. It's just two different brands so that we can compare them. I don't even know. Oh, this is house wine. And then that's, and that's Dark the Horse. Name. And this Dark Horse. Okay, cool. Uh, let's go Dark Horse first because they're trying to claim they're fancier. Okay. <laughs> well, the the thing with this is, is a LGBTQ can. So every time you buy this can, they actually donate money to support LGBTQ services. Um, so I think that's really rad. And I think that we need to be supporting all of each other, especially uh, this is a really funky time of year for a lot of people. So, you know, do what you can to be nice and, and share the love. Exactly. All right. uh, why don't you describe the difference between ours and the provisions real quick? Oh, yes. Okay. And then 
So even though this is a lighter petal pink um, than ours, it it's definitely a very um, strawberry uh, shortcake kind of sweeter strawberry. Very, very slightly sweeter tasting. It's not actually sweet at mm -hmm. all. Don't mm -hmm. don't let that fool you. But it's uh, just how ripe the fruit is, right? So you can think of but, a ripe strawberry versus a very ripe strawberry. But it's also There's kind of nuances. It's also kind of a different, um, like ours is a it seems like a little bit more forceful, and this is a little more delicate. I would say a hundred percent. I get a lot of herbal mm -hmm. on the back palette with yours mm -hmm. that I hadn't necessarily picked up on. The florals are very prominent to me. Uh, a lot of that kind of um, early spring tree blossom. Mm -hmm. and and this has a decent amount of that as well but mm -hmm, it's um mm -hmm. comes across a, just in a slightly perfumier way a slightly sweeter uh, taste um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. way man i can't get past that <laughs> that strawberry that you put over a strawberry shortcake mm. and it's usually you've you know mixed it in a little sugar <laughs> and you let it sit so it really accentuates that sweetness both of them have a little uh citrus zest as yeah. well they're very different they're quite different even though the tasting notes would sound fairly similar <laughs> mm -hmm, <laughs> which is mm -hmm, a trip mm -hmm, mm. here help i just drank mine i know but I can't do it. Okay, I want to do Somebody's side by do side oh, on yeah. these. Yeah, I'll so the the thing about cans, yes, it's a can. Oh, that sexy sound of popping open a can of wine. Okay. Um, Coca -Cola, I get it. Beer I totally. Or I know it, it's not. It's not great. Um, but they do serve a purpose. They're also. Um, so I was thinking we can just share. Mm. Okay. Um. And, um, you know, I mean, everybody can take their do. own, which is nice. Uh, you know, so you can do that kind of thing. You have them easily on ice. People can take it. They can fill their glass as they go. If you really want to work it, just give out straws. A full-size can should be about two and a half glasses. You know, two, two, two big glasses or hmm. three small glasses. Uh, and most of them are coming in full size cans. There are yeah, some people the slim. that do the slim cans that are like six ounces uh, usually. Or are they one eight sevens? I can't remember. Uh, there's both. Yeah. So everyone's still figuring this out, like what's going to become the standard. And and these cans are way cheaper to bottle in because there's so many beers and sodas, and it. like everything comes in this size can. All it needs is an extra layer. Uh, layer on the inside, uh, protective layer or whatever. And that's the oh, only yeah. difference because the wine has a higher acidity. But every, but other than that, like we're still figuring out wh what size is gonna be the industry standard and this and that. Um, it's nice to have one drink per can, but at the same time, I don't know. The, uh, everyone's these are nice to, to share. This. Yeah, these are, these are nice know? to share. They don't, you can't close them back up. You can't even put a stopper in them like this. So you kind of have to do the two, two and a half glasses. Here, let me taste that other one. Mm -hmm. I, I think I prefer the nose on this one. This one's got a little, um, a little dark note that mm -hmm. amongst these other ones, it seems maybe slightly out of place. I don't know, but, but not really. They're all lovely. I've loved this house wine in, in the past. Too. I have too. Yeah. And I've used it um, or, you know, uh, I was going to use it and then it got lost in the mail when I was trying to give a class on rosé. Oh. And <laughs> it didn't make it. And it showed up the day after. Ah. So the people that were kind enough, uh, this was in Atlantic City where I was giving a class and the people at the um, hotel were so nice and really jumping through some hoops to try to get it there. And so when it finally did arrive, uh, I spoke to the winery uh, representative and said, you know, didn't make it. What do you want me to do? And they were like, give it to 
people there. Give it to the staff. Or yeah. Whatever. So, <laughs> so I did. I was like, enjoy it, please. You know, it's a great yeah. little wine. Yeah. And I think that, you know, th they're so inexpensive. And if you and I can pop one open and share it, and then you go back and get another one or a different one or, you know, cause you can mix and match at the yeah. store too. So I think that's important to kind of consider that then people are getting to do this kind of thing. Exactly. Which is so much fun. It's fun to have different flavors throughout the night. And if you're stuck with just, with just the one, I don't know. You don't get any. <laughs> right? I agree. And so, um, you know, I highly suggest trying out some of these things. I think that um, each of these, uh, if you buy multiples, it was $4 uh, for two, $4 each. So you bought two minimum. Four per can. Yeah. I mean, that's nothing. That's $2 a drink. <laughs> mm -hmm. Really, really, really inexpensive way to go. And I do like, it's almost like a, great. a little bit firmer, more... It's a little more tannins. Uh, masculine. Um, it's a little more tannins. I like it. I like it a lot. They're, they've all got their place. Which um, one do you want? I'll take my glass back, I guess. Okay. <laughs> I hope you don't have cooties. I do. <laughs> Oh, we know this now. Oh, no. <laughs> Damn it. Um, all right. So then in addition, uh, there's a couple of best buys that I just want to throw out there in the way you shop for them. One of the more fun wines that you can have at a big party is a Beaujolais. So people think of Beaujolais Nouveau. They think of like stereotypes about this grape that's actually really great. And so we're not talking about Beaujolais Nouveau. We are talking about a actual uh, Beaujolais Village, uh, which is the Gamay grape. And it's so expressive and it goes with a bunch of things, especially if you have a lot of bold finger foods and stuff as appetizers. Uh, highly recommend that you chill it and you serve it chilled. This is how we keep it in our house is in the fridge and then we open it straight from there. And even... You, I mean, I think the ideal way is actually a little warmer than that. So, like, as soon as you open it, take it out and yes, and uh, let it slowly warm up if you're going to drink it over the next, you know, 45 minutes or whatever. Yeah. But um, anywhere cooler than room temperature is yeah. insanely good. Yeah. It's, it's okay at room temperature as well. But It, it just has a little more... Yeah. Um, it's fun. Gaminess. <laughs> uh, as it warms up. So you yeah. just definitely don't want it to be like too warm. But um, <laughs> the other thing about, oops, uh, it, about these wines that you can get really good deals on are uh, focusing on out of the country, subsidized farming, all of these kind of things actually mm -hmm. bring the price point down. So you can actually get some really good deals on imported wine and it's going to be a more balanced, I'm trying to pick my words carefully <laughs> here, uh, uh, really um, uh, a truly dry wine um, at a better price than some of the options that you're going to see yeah. on your uh, shelves at your grocery store that are from America, from the United States right. specifically. So I did yeah. pull, um, you know, uh, Liberty School. It's a good, like, solid little party wine. It, you know, it's often on deep discount. Um, they are making it in, you know, they make a lot of it. It's very consistent. Um, it's very jammy, but still dry. Um, and, you know, looking for those deep discounts, those wines that really are marked down, uh, those are really good buys. And then we have this bubbly, which is totally crazy, $8 on sale. What? What yeah. is it? It is a totally kind of generic <laughs> uh, uh, bubbly from California that I don't know if you can get this there, but I am just encouraging you to buy a bottle of some of those wines that are on sale 
try it out. And then you go back to the store and you buy more of it. I have been really happy with this. This is a mm. great party sparkler. You buy six, you get it down to $8. I mean, you cannot beat that for um, a brute that tastes very much like a solid champagne. Cool. There so, you go. Yeah. That's, so hopefully uh, that helps. And uh, hopefully helping you on the holiday pocketbook. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly, because that's really what, what you're trying to do. So how do you pair uh, with the meal but also keep everybody happy? Uh, Rosé, choose that as the white. And then mm -hmm. choose a really um, friendly mm -hmm. red. So for us, I feel like that's our Sangiovese, which is also uh, the red Sangiovese, which is also very pocketbook friendly that's at 19 as well um the Beaujolais is also a good example and our Tempranillo mm -hmm. is a fantastic especially if People you're doing New Mexican uh food for your holiday dinner that right. pairs so amazingly po pozole and stuff like that and tamales mm, uh, or yeah. mole oh yeah, I mean, mole would be insane with it. Oh, it's so yeah. good. So good. I mean, we should do so, that. Dang, what, what are we thinking? Why well, we Lily's not going to be here, and I don't like any other mole. Oh, yeah. That's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> I went all through Mexico learning about moles, tasting different moles, eating all the different towns' moles. And we even it, had a mole. We took a mole cooking class. <laughs> yes. And in the end, I was like, well, I like lilies. <laughs> it's just so good. It, it is. It really is. <laughs> All right. So um, the next question, I'm having a party and don't have enough nice wine glasses. Mm. I also don't want those to get broken. Mm -hmm. Is it okay to use plastic? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see these questions beforehand. That just, that just came out real fast. No, no, I don't think so, unfortunately. Okay, so do you think, because if this person is concerned about not having enough, it depends on how many people you have, like, are you really going to go invest in 24 All right. nice reels? Yeah, no, you, you're if not. If you've got 25, you, Would you're you like a rolled lip, no. or do you want a plastic cup? Sometimes that plastic cocktail cup is better than some of the oh, options. Oh, like the, like the short, the just the cocktail cup. Like, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, if if you, <sighs> I don't want a giant speed bump with so much if the, glass. If the wine itself, if like, if most of the wines are ten dollar wines and it's the wine doesn't taste that good anyway, then those wines I actually do feel like taste better out of plastic than they do out of wine glass. Well, sometimes, right? But, the cocktail glass, you know, is shaped like this, so um, part of this cupping the tulip is so that it brings those aromatics in so that you can get your nose in there and smell stuff. If yep. it's open, you're not getting aromatics, and if it doesn't have much to offer, right, you who cares You anyway. kind of taste less, to, less and I don't know. But I uh, I would powwow with some of your guests and see who has uh, 10 or 12 glasses that could bring some over and to supplement, to complement your set. They don't all have to match. Everyone understands that they uh, you're going to be pulling all the glasses out of the shelf, so they're not going to match. Yeah. Um, there is also renting from a party um, place where usually you can rent them for a dollar or yeah. two. And, and I understand. I mean, these these we saw them at an insane deal. I think it's only ten dollars a stem, but that's a lot when you're talking about twenty five of them. If that's what you have to do, you know, that's two hundred fifty bucks. It's, yeah. We had a lovely, lovely <laughs> person working for us. It just so charming and adorable, but she broke more glasses than you can ever imagine. And she'd um, carry them around on a whole tray, and, and the just, whole tray would go down. And she'd just like, Tush, and that was like weekly. <laughs> and we're like, ah, oh, you're, you're costing us a small fortune. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was really, and we get them for less than ten dollars, mind you, but still, we're like, hey, man, this is starting to pinch our budget here. <laughs> right. What do you think of uh, maybe a if there's, you know, there's people that are asking about so many different styles of parties. Yeah, um, exactly. And so exactly. there's also the uh, group walking around with appetizers and chit-chatting, and then you sit down. Uh, like, I feel like, like that's kind of, you could do plastic, and then everybody sits down and... Any kind of, know. like, 
<laughs> office party, like milling around, like mm-hmm. lots of people thing. Yeah, yeah, you can you can have cocktail glasses for sure with right? for the wine. But and in that case, you're not serving something that's going to cost that that much. I mean, in aggregate, it will, but not you know. Yeah. And but uh, if you're sitting down and you you've spent a lot paying of time attention. with your wine and you're paying it. To, I mean, with your uh, dinner and all that stuff, and yeah. you're going to sit down kind of all together. Uh, all of a sudden, I, you start paying attention to the wine. You're yeah. paying more attention to the pairings, and I think you need. I think you need a wine glass, kind of. Um, right. And you know, I. I a cut glass there's nothing like it i understand we're in a different situation than than a lot of people with right easy access to wine glasses but still uh uh, you know what i might even (laughs) wonder about is if you have beer tastes better out of these too by the way everything tastes better everything water tastes better yeah oh cocktails (laughs) right kids uh, kids water yeah i mean you know like you don't want to break them but these are pretty sturdy i mean you can break them, but you. But we usually don't. Those other ones that we broke, like two or three of them this week, but uh, <laughs> that was different. No, several of them were these two. <laughs> Jesse breaks at least no, eight glass a night. It's been no. It, it's been a bad. It's been a bad week. I, or bad two <laughs> weeks. Like three have gone down. I've, I've, I've left three soldiers <laughs> in the field. <laughs> um, so I guess we're mixed on the response to this because um, obviously, if you're seated at a table, it. It just feels a little gauche to have plastic at the table. If you're milling around, yeah. totally okay. I mean, yeah. also, if you're milling around, then you can take one of these and put a um, straw in it. Which, by the way, I don't know if you guys know this, but if you spin this top around, this is how you're supposed to put a straw in. Oh. And it holds it because, you know, it... it comes up no way you and it's spin that around and put that in there yes i i have now realized that most people don't know that trick that is how you're supposed to do it so wow okay jeez i did i did not know that either and so depending on how Learned fancy new every day yeah well you know what can i say chat 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 and he's like <laughs> wah, 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 wah. no if, i mean it, <laughs> If you're if you're drinking it out of a straw, you're not tasting it that much anyway. No, you know, this is like, just a different yeah. level of party exactly. as well. We we do have exactly. New Year's Eve coming up, and let's face it, a whole lot of yeah. stuff goes out the window. And now yeah. you you know, for at least me and my <laughs> friends, we want bubbles in like however you can get them. However we can get them, and um, <laughs> we're going to be starting early. We're uh, going out to LA for our New Year's, and yeah, whoop whoop. Yeah, and what's up, Jules? We'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> and my Jules and I, we like to drink some bubbles. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be awesome! Oh, it's gonna be so much Can't fun. Wait. So, if you have any follow up questions on that one, please um, message us, and we'll try to um, message you back right away so that you can get shopping. Uh, our <laughs> final question is: How do you handle food allergies with a large dinner party? Ouch. Ah, That's yeah. so hard. Uh, ideally, there's just lots of dishes. And um, you can let the people making the dishes know that there's a gluten intolerance somewhere in the group. And you can try to relegate the gluten to two dishes. Or, you know, like, don't needlessly throw gluten into whatever. Or... If there's or nuts, nuts are a nuts big one. Or and then the other one is probably like the shellfish thing. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. those For are sure. probably your three biggest groups. So like, just try to have those be to one or two dishes, and mm-hmm. hopefully it's not the same person that has all three of those allergies. So often it is, but they already know that about themselves and they realize they're not going to be able to eat much of the thing, you know. Right. So they're going to prepare for that hopefully, but if if you're trying to do like if the main dish is something like that i don't know I, I you have to make two i think you have to make two i think you also um you know for example i've seen on a lot of um fine dining restaurant menus the surf and turf is you know super popular mm-hmm. for christmas or for new years and um i think it's important to just cook them separately so yeah. you then also have them on different plates in the kitchen 
so that uh, somebody that does have a shellfish allergy, like yeah. Jesse, um, he's not going, he can still enjoy the steak because you yeah. haven't put them together on a plate right. as a pairing. Let people do that themselves yeah. or, you know, you dish if you're doing accordingly. like paella or gumbo or something, you know, maybe, Often, maybe I'm out of luck. Yeah, <laughs> you know? and he loves it's, paella too. I, oh, I but really it's always. Do. So let's see. So you can do clams and mussels. And... I just can't do shrimp and lobster, but you know, it just depends on what your uh, <laughs> what your stuff is. You know. Yeah. No, totally. <laughs> and I agree with that. I also, um, I have. I'm one of those really annoying people that has a sensitivity to gluten, <laughs> and I know. I already know. I, it's I not annoy celiac. myself. It's not an into- It's not. Nope. It's not impossible. I just don't like the way I feel when I eat wheat. And maybe it's because I eat like an entire baguette or something. I or don't a know. Half a pizza or a... <laughs> yeah, it's like, okay, woman, if you would eat less of it, maybe you would feel better about, you know, digesting it. Anyway, I am sensitive to it, but I also try to um, be careful about how much I actually do think about that. But I also let myself, because I don't have a true allergy, I can, you know, take a little bit of the really beautiful artisan bread and, you know, those kind of things. Yeah. But you need to be prepared if you are one of these people that <laughs> have something, um, you know, that you that you look at what are the options, what is going on, yeah. choose wisely. And if need be, have a granola bar in your bag because you also don't want to end up being totally yeah. wasted because you haven't eaten enough. <laughs> yeah. But I, I think as a proper host, I don't think you have to um, not serve anything, you know. If, yeah, yeah. You know, if, if somebody's vegan, like, you're going to try to make sure that there's at least a couple dishes that, they, that they're going to dig on. But I don't think you have to forego all your plans just to accommodate the one person out of 25 or whatever it might be you know like i do think it's really really helpful to make sure to have a listing um yeah. you know if if it's uh serve yourself for sure make sure yes. that you have a card that says or it's taped to a toothpick yeah. that you put it in the thing so that people if, know, oh, this is vegan, yeah. this has um, crab, this has meat, but for, you can't see it. Right. And for people that have like celiac, it's like, I mean, they mm -hmm. know they're going to be, <laughs> they're going to be grilling everybody and be like, okay, exactly what went into this, every ingredient, you know, mm -hmm. they're going to, they're going to insist on it because it's, you know, it's a matter of life and death in, in some cases, you know? Well, or like our dear friend, Helen, she's just mm. horribly ill for days, for <laughs> yeah. days on end. She can't go anywhere or do anything because she's so ill. And, and um, luckily we haven't had to, you know, call the uh, ambulance right. for her, but we have uh, done group dinners here in Dixon when she's been visiting and surprise. And she's like, oh no. <laughs> okay well i think i might be staying with you longer than i anticipated <laughs> right hmm. yeah i don't know all right well so here's what we've gone over just to recap we've got two different uh sparkling rosés both of them were fabulous I would recommend either one of them. Mm -hmm. Super fun. Definitely mm -hmm. recommend, especially for totally. New Year's Eve. Also, bubbly is a great one for, uh, you know, people feel really happy when they get bubbles. Yeah. It's this, you it's know, an just instant automatically, celebration. It's a celebration, exactly. Yeah. So <laughs> definitely that. Obviously, we have a lineup of really excellent wines if you want something really highly handcrafted. So our Rosé of Sangiovese, our Red Sangiovese, those are both at 19, which is fantastic. I mean, I'm a big shopper of wines. I buy wines all the time from all over the place. Um, that is a really good deal for these wines. And the other one is the Tempranillo that I would highly recommend. Mm -hmm. We have a long list, so have fun but um but those three are so great for parties uh don't forget to shop your deals that are imported from europe or other countries um 
uh, South America, Chile, Argentina, uh, those all have really good buys that they ship in. And make sure to be paying attention to those deals. Try it out, then go back, buy more if you like it. Anything else? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so next week, we are going to help you plan a solo holiday. There's a lot of people that are choosing not to travel, <laughs> stay at home, or um, are it's not be too on their late own. By then. Uh, well, it's the 22nd. Oh, they still got a couple of days to. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So, <laughs> um, you know, gonna get some notes from Johnny V on like how to cook for one, which oh. has always been one of my big. I, I don't know how to do that. You know, it seems like a lot of work. And then, I don't know, is it for four? <laughs> what I, am I going to do with all those leftovers? I have a hard time even leftovers? just cooking for two, you know, or three. Right? It's like, uh, uh. Yeah. I'll just make like for six and then we can have like tw two more times. Or yeah. Three, you know? yeah, exactly. And, <laughs> you know, there's a lot of people that are going to be spending the holiday either on their own or um, not able to travel for various reasons. So we're going to uh, tackle that next week. Uh, reminder, every time you buy a bottle, we plant a tree with Eden Refor Reforestation Projects. One of these times I'm going to be able to say it, right? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. We have almost 60,000 trees that we've planted. It's pretty good. It's very good. Hey. Nice. <laughs> and thank you. And, you know, if there's any other... Um, questions that you guys have things you could keep sending them in and i will just message you back if it doesn't make it onto the show uh lots of holiday planning stuff didn't make mm -hmm. it but um i'm happy to email you back and help you out with those kind of things and uh we are open every single day throughout the holidays except for christmas day and new year's day okay those are the only two otherwise throughout winter okay all right, guys, we will see you next week. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs>